All right. I'd like to try to title this, but I'm not. Open letter to the Republican candidates, colon. Would you please read your Bible before you pay, take a position here on abortion? The verse in front of you is a legal verse. All the people running for office have degrees in law. So how come they can't read this verse? As you're going to see. Let me turn on the lights. It's starting to get dark here. I hate, I hate willful stupidity more than anything. Just unbelievable. These are, this is the original Hebrew. This was our word. Okay. Ason. All right means harm, but it's talking about to the woman, okay? To the woman. Now, the English translations, this is the NASB. Let me pull this up so you can see that. That's the NASB. That's the King James. That's Brenton's translation from to the English of the, the LXX. That's the NIV. This is Bible in Basic English, Darby, Douay Reims, Catholic Bible. That's going to be really important to cover. Authorized Standard Version, it's something like the King James. Okay. This is the English Standard Version, which is really a horrible translation made by today's scholars who really just need to go back to school. This is the Old Geneva Bible. This is JPS Tanakh of 1917. New American Bible. New American Standard, there's a British version of the NIV. There's another Jewish uh, Catholic Bible called the New Jerusalem Bible. New King James, New Living Translation, New Revised Standard, Revised Standard, the Web, uh, Webster, Webster's own translation of the Bible, because Webster wrote and spoke in Greek. 1985 Tanakh. Webster Bible, that's the, this, this was revised, this was the original. Young's Literal Translation, which came out to um, the end of 1980s, 1880s, 1898, okay. So you had two of them. All right, I was thinking 1895, because I'm not looking at the lower end of the screen. And this is the online Vulgate. I think we'll start there. Online Vulgate. You see the English with three translations above it. See this word? Abortivum? Hmm? Hmm? Where do you think we get the word abortion from? Ding, 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 ding. Okay? It's, it's miscarriage. 1985 Tanakh, Jewish. Translate to Hebrew. Ason. No other damage. Lo Ason. Miscarriage. Translated as. Abortion by the Vulgate. This Catholic, Catholic, the original Vulgate came out around 200 AD. Okay? Then Jerome made some changes to it. And I'm presuming that the online Vulgate is an amalgam of the two because that's what happened. Okay? Jerome's translation kept on getting changed. And the old errors that were in the Vulgate kept on creeping back. This isn't one of them. Abortion. Miscarriage. Sorry about the sirens. I live right down the street from the police department and the, the ambulance, so. Okay, abortion. Aborts, literally. It's a it's the it's being used like a sort of gerund. She's pregnant and the, the pregnancy aborts. Translated as miscarriage, because that's what it technically is called. In our modern English, abortion means somebody does it to you on purpose. 
Okay, but to abort is an actual verb that we all have used for years. When something is in the process, hasn't finished developing, and then it stops. Okay, so your pro-lifers are aborting the word of God when they call it murder. All of them, all of your candidates who are Republicans who claim to be pro-life and claim Bible support for it, they are, they are actually aborting the Bible right in front of your eyes. This is the Tanakh. It's one of eight proper, correct translations. This is the Vulgate. Vulgate. You know, like the, the what used to be considered the best version of the Bible ever. Okay, it was considered better than the original. When the Catholic Church first got started under Constantine, they did have the Greek, but they used the Latin. Latin Vulgate. It's, it's online because they remaps some of the verse names. This is still Exodus 22, however. See? Abort, 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 miscarriage. All right? Now, her fruit depart from her is a literal translation. It's an idiom, meaning that the fetus just exits the womb, just leaves. Okay, it's not birthing, it's aborting. The fetus aborts, called miscarriage in modern English. All right, but the literal word, the literal words are that that the fetus just goes out. It's like. Doot. It, it, I hate to make this kind of analogy, but it, it's the kind of analogy I need to make. It's like when you defecate, it just goes out of you. Okay? It's not a birthing. It just leaves. All right? Now, I'm sorry that I had to be graphic there, but it, it was really important so that you can understand what the issue is here. This is a legal verse. If two men contend and they hurt a woman with child, okay, and then again, this is a literal translation because they want to cover it up, and the fetus just, it's translate, it's, they use the word fruit as a euphemism, just leaves, and it's to understand that it's leaving her body, and yet no harm to her, no harm to her occurs, remember? No harm to her. See? Yeah, I'm going to have to pull it up. Otherwise, you can't see that. See? This was what we had in the first segment. No harm to her. Okay? This is the Hebrew and no. And then this is basically, it shall happen, it shall become, it shall exist, harm. Okay, so it's, it's, in, it's not in the same order as we'd say in the English. And no harm happens. But it's harm to her. To her. And this is theological word book of the Old Testament, one of the most respected lexicons. Okay, this is not brain out talking. This is a verse. This is the actual text. You are not reading or hearing an opinion. It's the text. Now, granted, there are a lot of Bible verses, and there's a lot of things that you can say about opinions. This is not an opinion. This is the word, what it means in the grammar. And no, and nothing happens harmful. But harmful to what? To her. Why? Because, see this ending right here? That's a feminine ending. See? Feminine. So when it's saying, and nothing, and there's no harm, it means to her. Because that's the hidden pronoun that's antecedent. There's a rule in all languages, in all grammar. Okay? It's called the rule of the antecedent pronoun. The next clause that follows, if it's not talking about anything with a new object or a new subject, it means the one that you just were talking about. Like when I say John, he. 
when I say the word he, I'm pointing back. The word he is pointing backwards to the word John. So when it says, and no, and nothing, and nothing harmful happens, it means to her because of this index ending right here at the end. To her, not to the fetus. The fetus isn't it. She's a her. She's alive. She's outside the womb. Okay? So this is all about whether she gets hurt in the fight. And the kind of hurt now, see this is this is a they're they're lying here. They're just flat lying. Okay? It's not she gives birth prematurely. The fetus exits, meaning it wasn't supposed to. But because of the harm, the hurt that got done to her, like maybe the guy punched her in the stomach by mistake or on purpose. Now she has a miscarriage, okay? Now this is a real political football, this stupid thing. Then and now, because look, she gives birth prematurely. No, fruit depart is more literal, okay? See, it goes out. It goes out of her. Her. The issue is her. But there's no harm to her. All right? The same thing here. You know, she, she's pregnant. All right? And it goes out, see, it goes out of her. But, see, here's the antecedent. Here's the antecedent. And to her, there is no damage. Okay? To her. So how many translations actually recognize that? Well, not the NASB because it's being, you know, politic. This is like our Republicans running for office. They don't, if they know this, they won't admit it and they're dishonest. You shouldn't elect them. Okay? Fruit to part. Well, we're really not going to say it's a miscarriage. We're afraid to use the real word. They will just say fruit to part. Because, you know, in 1610 when the King James Bible was started, you can sort of forgive them that. Okay? LXE, that's 19th century. Imperfectly formed. If it's imperfectly formed, it means that it's an abortion. Okay? But he can't bring himself to say that. Breton was trying to be nice. Okay? Birth prematurely? No. Okay, again, this there's, there's nothing like this in, in there. NIV? Now, Bible and basic English. Causing the loss of the child. Yeah. But no other evil comes to her, the mother. Okay? Darby. She be delivered? They don't, they, they don't say the child is delivered because it's dead. She's delivered. And no mischief happened to her. Okay? Now get this. This is Dewey Ream 1610. This is the Catholic Bible. Jeb Bush claims to be a Catholic, and he doesn't even know his own Catholic Bible. And he's the one guy I actually want to vote for. But if he's going to be so damn dumb he doesn't even read it, then why is he calling himself a Catholic? Okay, look at, look at, this is Catholic. This is a Douay Reims Bible 1610. If men quarrel and one strike a woman with child and she miscarry, the word indeed is not there. Okay. And she miscarries, but she herself is okay, but she lives. He, the guy who hit her, shall be answerable for as much damage as the woman's husband shall require, and as the arbiter's award. In other words, hi, you and I were in a fight. You hurt my wife. You're going to have to pay $500 for fixing her toenail or whatever got hurt, but nothing for the miscarriage. Or he might say, hi. You know, it was, it's a miscarriage. It took that, she was four months pregnant. Um, now we're going to have to go through another four months. I think you ought to pay us $200 for, you know, all that effort. 
it's a civil case. It's not a criminal act, and it's certainly not murder. See, do you see any penalty of murder? You know what the penalty for murder was in the Old Testament? Life for life. Did you see any of that wording there? No. Do you see any of that wording in any of these other verses showing on screen? No. Because it ain't in the text. Okay? Have fruit depart. That's ASV, which is like the King James. ESV. Her children come out. That's not what it says. There's no text here saying children come out. That's not saying children come out. Okay? That's not saying children come out. So the guys who are behind the English Standard Version, there's nothing English or Standard or a version about it. Just throw them away. This is a total, total, ugh. They just shouldn't even publish that Bible. Okay? Geneva. Her child depart from her. Okay, well, Geneva was like 1500s. Okay, that's not what the text says either. JPS 1917, her fruit departs. See, they took, they took, they said, well, look, we'll just translate it literally, okay, and then let everybody else figure out what that means. Okay, New American Bible, she suffers a miscarriage. So just like the Catholic Douay Reims, the New American Bible, which is 400 years later, let's see if I can. Okay. New American Bible. I don't know when it was. What's the year that it was? Um, it's not saying what year. Okay, but the New American Bible has got to be somewhere in the 1980s, 1990s, maybe 1970s. When two men fight, hurt a pregnant woman, so she suffers a miscarriage, but no further injury to her, the guilty one shall be fined as much as the woman's husband demands. Not murder. Not murder. Not murder. Okay, now we have the New American Standard Bible. I can get my mouse to work. 1977. I'm trying to show you how long the right translation has been known. The oldest of the lot that has been right that we've seen so far is the Douay Reims 1610 Bible. They knew it was miscarry. Okay, this is now 1977. I'm not sure what this is. It could be 1980, 1990, it could be 1970. Okay, she has a miscarriage. 400 years after the Douay Reims. So it isn't a question of Roe versus Wade. And it certainly isn't a question of Catholicism because the Catholics got the translation right. New American Standard with Code 1977. Now look at that. That's the New American Standard of 1977. So she has a miscarriage. 1977. Now let's go back up here, and that's this is also the New American Standard from 1995. The 1977 was just after Roe versus Wade. In 1995, they changed it to give birth prematurely. You know why, don't you? They got to sell Bibles. And that tells you that between 1977, when it was politically okay for the same New American Standard to translate it this way. See what a political, what a political gambit this is. See, 1977, look below, New American Standard, 1977. They had no trouble saying it was miscarriage then. Even though Roe versus Wade had come out in 1973, they had no problem saying this. Partly because the translation committee is usually meeting for a decade before they come out with a new translation. And so they just let this slide, despite Roe versus Wade. 
and also because hello the Douay Reims was in 1610 and it said miscarriage so it wasn't going to offend the Catholics to say miscarriage but you'll notice this is the correct translation it's about whether it's politically okay to admit admit the correct translation which indeed the oldest we've seen so far is right here see miscarry but by 1995 no they're gonna change it to give birth prematurely because how many Bibles are they gonna sell to the Christians who hate God so much that they won't even bother to read their Bibles and so these people are catering to Christians who hate God so they can sell Bibles that have the wrong translation in it. You want to talk about political motivation? So now we come back down here. 1977 versus 1995. Same Bible version. So you can see very clearly it's the same Bible version. Only in 1995, they're ashamed to admit it's miscarriage. Okay? NIV, which is the British version of the NIV, they're going to copy the NIV. New Jerusalem, this is another Catholic Bible. She suffers a miscarriage, but no further harm to her is done. That's the correct translation for, of the Hebrew and of the Greek, too. The Greek is a little hard to explain. That's a Catholic Bible. And I'm not sure what year it was issued, but I want to say the New Jerusalem Bible started to be published around 1975, maybe. You can go look it up. That's a Catholic Bible. Catholic churches use either Douay Reims or, more commonly, the New Jerusalem because New Jerusalem's newer, suffers a miscarriage. That might explain why the Catholic Church has never made a government create a law like Roe versus Wade. That took fundies doing that. Catholic Church has never had a law on the books which says that a civil government is supposed to decide when a fetus is, you know, human. Catholic Church has always taught that life begins at conception. But you'll notice here, that didn't stop it from correctly translating this verse. This verse contradicts the Catholic Church. That's what's so astonishing about it. It contradicts. See, if, if human life began in the womb at conception, then this last clause the person responsible will pay, then it should be a life for a life. But that's that's not what it is. Okay? And then you got the other wimpy translations. New King James is K is, you know, also 1982. Catering to the stupid Christians who hate God so much they don't bother to read the verse. New Living Translation, same problem. Okay? But this is the New Revised Standard. Even though it's 1989, miscarriage. Properly translated miscarriage. Revised Standard, 1952. I happen to have a hardback of this one also. Miscarriage. So 1952, 1952, when the United States was much more Christian a nation than it is now, how come there wasn't a Roe versus Wade law in the books in 1952? Because everybody knew that the fetus wasn't human until it was born, that's why. It's only when you stop reading your Bible that you don't know that. And you start demanding laws and you give to Caesar what belongs to God, which is the choice about when life begins. That's God's choice, not Caesar's. So Roe versus Wade should be overturned. We shouldn't be funding either abortion or anything. There shouldn't be anything funded. No social program should be funded by the federal government at all. 
vote your money where you want it to go. Don't give it to Uncle Sam and let him vote for you. Everything the government touches turns to doo-doo. So have as little government as possible. It's very simple. And then there won't be a miscarriage of justice. Now look at how important this is. This is 1952. The Revised Standard Version was used in Catholic churches also. But it was used in the Baptist churches. It was used pretty much everywhere. This was the most commonly common version of the Bible in use during my first 10 years of life. It was the first Bible I ever got. Or no, second. First one I got was the King James Red Letter. Because I said the Lord's Prayer correctly when I was eight. Okay? That, right there. Miscarriage. Now, if this version of the Bible from 1952 was so well known for so long, then what happened? Okay? Were all of our parents and our parents' parents very bad Christians that they didn't put a law or insist that there be a law on the books about like Roe versus Wade? Our parents and their parents' parents and our parents' 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 parents. There has never been a law like Roe versus Wade on any country's books anywhere in the world at any time in history. So are they the ones who going for generations back are all bad Christians? Or are we? What's being aborted here? What's being miscarried here? We're sitting here going to vote for president, for candidates who claim they're pro-life and they're all lawyers and they can't read that verse that's been on the books in a very well-known translation since 1952. Not to mention the other one up here, okay, the Douay Reims, which is 1610. 400 years that translation has been out. And what? All of the candidates running for office and calling themselves pro-life can't read that? How do, can it get plainer? If two men quarrel and one strike a woman with child and she miscarries but lives herself, he, the guy who hit her, shall be answerable for so much damage as the woman's husband shall require and as arbiters shall award. In other words, it's not a crime. So now let's look at the Douay Rim in the next verse. Douay Rim. But if she dies, if harm occurs, literally, to her, if harm to her occurs, See, if harm to her occurs, all right, and they all get that, except they don't mention that it's to her, except this one, Bible and basic English. If damage occurs to her, they're being literal. Mischief is a terrible word you use to translate it. But this the English for us on here we're pro tort harm damage so you have to use a generic term because it is a generic term but it means to her the only one who's really stating that clearly is Bible and basic English but even the Douay Rings but if her death ensue thereupon they're sort of it's not saying her death 
he shall render life for life. It's literally a saying, but if harm occurs, okay, and then it's life for life. That life for life as the rule. In other words, if she is hurt, then it's criminal. If she's not hurt, it's not criminal. Okay? If she's not hurt, it's not criminal. Right here. She's not hurt. See, I'm, I'm covering that because that's how you know it's her. In other words, if the fetus, if the fetus, if the fetus, if she miscarries, then it's civil. But if she's hurt, it's criminal, meaning the fetus is not a legal person. Now, I'm a brain out. There's nothing especially good about me. I use 1 John 1 9 a lot, so that's why I sound smart. But how is it that all of our Republican candidates can't read this verse? In a verse, in a book that's 400 years in translation, the Douay Reims Catholic, 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 1610 edition. Huh? And if you say, wow, but that's, that's really all. Most people don't have an old Bible like that. Okay, well, everybody and his brother had the Revised Standard Version from 1952. So what, they can't read it? How about the later Revised Standard Version of 1989? I think that's the age of this one, isn't it? Yeah, 1989. Can't read it there? Okay, well, here are two of them. Okay? Here's the 1985 Tanakh. Translation made by the Jews, they ought to know. Okay? Now, you know, Webster, that was his own personal translation. So he screwed it up. Young's Literal will have, I don't know which is worse, the King James translation or Young's Literal. Probably Young's Literal. It's just, it's not a good translation. Okay? But this honey is the Vulgate. Catholic Vulgate Abortivum. Most of these guys have law degrees. And when you have a law degree, you have to take at least one semester of Latin because a whole lot of legal terms are Latin terms. Whoa. What happened to these people? All Republican candidates can't read, or they're lying. They're just saying they're pro-life in order to get votes. Okay, but you're not going to get God's vote, honey, if you abort his word. And here it is, all right? And to her, coming out to her, no harm. In other words, yeah, okay. You have to look kind of far to find a good translation that's honest, right? The NAB. BBE. And that. Now, if you're a Republican candidate and you call yourself a Christian and you call yourself pro-life and you try to say that abortion is murder, then you are aborting the word of God and I should abort you in the voting booth. Peace out.